Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Albert Joseph. In today's tutorial, I want us to look at how to make your testing more object-oriented. Basically, if you are coming from a language like Java, PHP, and some of the more object-oriented programming languages, um, you have like a base class where your test become, um, your test need to extend the base class. And the reason why you most times we have that base class is because the base class usually provides some, let's say, free stuff, like the ability to create a setup method and the ability to create a teardown method. The setup method is usually used to initialize your resources and the teardown is for you to do like cleanup and all that. So, but in Go, we you, we just have the plain testing.t, the pointer to testing.t, which doesn't do much. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the testify package to make your testing more object-oriented. Now, the first thing I want us to do is to, I have very basic setup here. There's nothing. Look at the Go mod. I'm using Go 1.21.4. I have this service package here, which has nothing, just this user file. So you can just do something like that. Um, let's create a function quickly. And it will be, I don't know if I have, a, okay, I don't have Copilot enabled, so it's good. This, if you are not using any AI stuff, please do, because I think um, AI stuff is it's really nice to get used to them. Um, so this function basically is going to read from a file and then build this um, slice for us. So let's do it. Byte slice. I call it, this is what I call, I like to call it. Um, pass the source. If anything goes wrong, we want to return the error. So far, so good. Else, let's do some string manipulation here. What do I want to do? String the by slice, and then we split it by new line. So it's going to be new lines. Nothing special here. Instead of part, I can call it line now. And a better variable name here will be lines. All right. Now, if I don't want to add any empty empty string to this um, slice, so because of that, I'm going to do another thing here. Trim space. That's it. Okay, let me just go to bash. All right. Everything looks good. This is our function. How do we test this? And how do we uh, take advantage of the setting up and the teardown? That's, those are the most important concepts we want to learn here. But let's do the classic approach. And you see how I'm going to transition from that classic way of testing in Go to the more object-oriented style. So let's go and create a user underscore test and then func test uh, load user. What is the name of the function? Load users. Okay. All right. Nothing special here. Let me do a um, Let's create some test cases here. It's going to be slice of struct. Can I type struct? All right. Name this source. Source is also string. Uh, expected will be this. Expect error will be bool. Some people don't like to do this 
style because I'm going to have to add if statement. Some people don't like if statement in text, but hey, it works. Valid source and uh, source for man will be users.txt. Okay. Unexpected, let's say John and Jane. Okay. Expect error is false. Of course, it's false by default. Nothing new here. This is very good classic way of testing. I'm forgetting range. Um, so the range should be on this side. Okay. What else? Let's do um, subtest. Okay, so at this point, users error. This is where we call load users and we give it the source. Now, if we expect error, we are going to let me bring testify so that I can use the assert. We're going to use the library anyway. So Let's do go get. I think this like this. Assert mark name T and uh, error. If we expect an error, then error should be near else. Assert near. Okay. Uh, assert equals um, t dot expected and um, users. No surprises here, right? Uh, the test is going to fail, but at least let's see it fail. All right, uh, and no, let's run go more tidy to see what happens. Run it one more time. All right, the test failed. Of course, we know it's failing because of um, this file is not there. So how do we? So now this is this is the idea of using. If you are using like Java or PHP, for instance, you need to in your test setup, you would have created the file for this test, just this test. Since we don't have access to that, why don't we do it ourselves? So let me come here and do os.write all right so users dot okay and then let's write the data inside it it's basically john and jim okay of course let's not forget the permission Okay, and then let's run it. Test passed, but the file remained even though the test has finished executing. So two ways to do it is one, you can come to the end of the test and uh, do os.remove users.txt. Let's run it. Okay, but then let's come here intentionally. Um, do something like this. Uh, assert new. Error is new because everything is fine. So let me make it uh, assert not new. I just made it like invalid now. Like, so we're making a mistake here, but this one is here already. All right, you see the file is gone, even though it failed, but the file is gone because we reach here. But I think there is a way, let's say t.feta for instance. And uh, now the file won't go anymore because we fit out here and the 
code never gets to this place. Or what I don't know is you can let's defy it. And now you see, even though we fetter here, the defer is better because it deferred anyway, because this function in somehow is going to execute. So you should use defer. So this is one way to do your setting up and your tear down. So this become your setup. So setup. Tear down. This is very go way of doing things. Classic go of go way of doing things. Of course, some people do this. Well, I don't see any benefits of doing this, right? Like, why do you want to wrap it in another function? It still work, right? But honestly, I'm just I can just point the defer directly to this function here and that works as except if you have more things you want to do you can wrap it in the function right so this looks good no problems but then like i said we want to be more object oriented so let's go the object oriented style let's do it i'm going to fold this and then i'm going to create in go how do you do object oriented programming is to use struct a lot of people don't want to say it is object oriented, but for me, that is how I say it. That is what I think when I'm doing it. So I'm going to say um, load user test. Oops. Load users test um, suite. And it says struct. But then what we need is we need to embed this suite from testify it's, it's it come it gives us free stuff all right so imagine this is this, you can imagine this as our base class you know if you are your your test uh, if you are using php this is your base class or java this is your test base class okay so let's go let's add some methods to it it's, it's just a struct right it's nothing special. I'm going to add the first. The first one is to um, let's do the this same thing, but I'm going to name it the same test that we have here. This time around, we don't have access to. I'm going to skip everything here and we paste it in here. Now, where is t? We need access to the t, but it's somewhere here. So we can say t is equal to s dot this. So the function t here gives us that access to it. So all the functions, all the met all methods you are attaching to this struct that start with test, they becomes your test. And this is how it works in, um, so how it works in if you are testing in Java or PHP. You can either use annotation or your test need to start with test underscore something or test something. All right. So this is our test. Nothing much has changed. But how about the setup and tear down? Yeah, we have access to that. So if you scroll through this, uh, if you scroll through this uh, struct, you can see that it has a lot in it for us. So let's go and define the test uh, setup and test tear down. If I, I there is no way to run it yet, so no problem. No problem. Just hold tight. Test. So setup. It has to be called setup test. And this is where we bring this one now. This is our setup. Then we need to tear down. Tear down test. This one is basically OS dot remove we're bringing. Okay, so for this, this is one test. It was a single test suite, like a single class. So this is going to run. The test setup is going to run first, then the tear down. Now that we have this, what next? 
because it's just a struct, there is no way. Go doesn't have a way to run this yet. So you need a way. You need to you need to go back to the uh, using this classic test. So let's delete everything here, and we can come here and say suit run. We need to pass it the test and instance of this. This is it. Because if you let's go to the run and see, it takes the test and then instance of the testing suit. And look at what it has inside. You can take advantage of some of these um, um, tests, even like after test. It, ha it has a whole lot for you to come and explore. So now we have that, it's time to run it. It's passed. How about coverage? Let's look at the coverage. Our coverage is at 88.9%. So how do we get to 100%? That's not hard at all. We are using table-driven tests. So in short, if you look at the code, this is a part that we've not covered. So how can we make this uh, OS.read file to fail? Is by giving it a wrong path. So I can say wrong source. Let's say wrong. We don't expect anything here. It should be near and then uh, error, expect error should be true this time. Now let's run it. Replace the suit, it's 100% covered. Let's close these things out so you can see everything neatly as it is. A quick recap. We started with the classic um, test, everything was in here, but then we moved to a more object-oriented style by using a struct, which cause basically we are embedding this um, testify test suit, and then that helps us to do um, setup and tear down for this test. You can of course add more tests if you want. Um, so test example right and then not you can assert true true that's it and this is going to run um i went to click uh, debug but we're able to run it you see so this is it. Thank you guys for the video, for watching the video. It's a very short video, but I think it's really useful. Um, see how you can incorporate this into your project. Let me know what you think about Joseph. If you like my videos, if you like my content, please subscribe, um, share my videos.